Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnichi. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA routing and switching, ICND 1, exam number 100, 105. And this is a section 1.1, compare and contrast OSI and TCP models. Now, creation of internet, development of TCP IP. The first packet switch network and predecessor of today's internet was the Advanced Research Project Agency Network, or ARPANET for short, which this came, came into life in 1969 by connecting mainframe computers at four locations. They connected these four computers together just in case there was a war or anything like that, and then they, gave it, they made it available to be used by universities and research laboratories. So introducing host-to-host -host communication. Now, host-to-host -host communication, they do require consistent model. This model addresses hardware, software, and data transmission. There was, or there is a two different type of host models. We have older models and standard-based models. Now, older models, they used to be proprietary, which one company owned the hardware and software. So you, if you had to have a host-to-host -host communication, you had to purchase everything from that single company. Now these days we have an open standard on TCP IP model, which is a multi-vendor software layered approach. So standard, well, that's, a, that's the way to go about. So you don't really want, for example, uh, anything that is proprietary, it's just gonna cost more and it's not scalable. So now, for example, you can buy a router or a switch or network device. You don't really care who's making it. They're gonna work because they do follow the standards. So. In the network that most people are familiar with, with the devices that we are familiar with or uh, users are familiar with, they are called end devices. For example, you can see it on the screen, like end device what we have here, PC, uh, printer, server, laptop, phone, IP phone maybe, and the wireless device. The end devices form the interface between the human network and the communication network. In the context of the network, end devices are called hosts. Now this host device is either the source or the destination of message that is transmitted over network. They usually, for example, we're going to have an end device that is going to want to communicate with another end device. So for example, the, the PC here wants to communicate with the server. So the end device is the source, that's the PC, and the server is the destination. That message is going to go through the intermediary devices to get to the destination. But that's the source, and usually that's the destination. It could be the destination, could be the intermediary device, but not usually, not uh, frequently. So successful communication between hosts on a network require the interaction of many different protocols. So a protocol is a set of rules that governs the communication. For example, we have to follow the protocols for to be able to communicate with each other. Like now, even in, in human conversation, we follow in the protocol Protocols are implemented in the software and hardware of each host and other devices. So first model that we're going to be talking about is TCP IP model. Now TCP IP model is made out of four layers, as you can see there. We have an application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and the network access. And now we're going to talk in a bit more depth about each one later on on the, slot, on the uh, list this lesson. So the internet protocol suite, like many protocol suites, may be viewed as a set of layers. Each layer solves a set of problems involving the transmission of data and provide well-defined services to the upper layers protocols based on using services from some lower layer protocols. So we have, for example, here an application layer is upper layer protocols where we have a lower layer protocol from the transport layer. So upper layers are logically closer to the user and deal with the abstract data, relying on lower layer protocols to translate that data into form that can eventually be tr uh, physically transmitted. So we are, as a user, we're going to communicate with an application, that's an upper layer protocol, which is going to take that data and send it through network, but relying on the lower layer to be able to translate that to something that they can translate and send it to. So the TCP IP model will consist of four layers as described in RFC 1122. Now that wasn't as in depth. So they made that OSI model, which is made out of seven layers. 
So the OSI stands for Open System Interconnection. The reference model has served at the most basic elements of computer networking since 1984. We're still listen, learning about that. The OSI reference model is based on proposals developed by the International Standards Organization, ISO. So these are the guys who actually made the OSI model. The original objective of the OSI model was to provide a set of design standards for equipment manufacturers so they can communicate with each other. The OSI model defines a hierarchical architecture that logically partition the function required to support system-to-system -system communications. And don't worry, I'm going to go in each layer um, in depth very soon. So the OSI model has seven layers, each of which has a different level of abstraction and performs a well-defined function. So why we have why are we use in layers? So benefits of using layered model. There are benefits of using the layered model uh, to describe network protocols and operation, which include Assisting protocol design, because protocols that operate at a specific layer have defined information that they act upon and defined the interface to the layer above and below. Using layer model, it does foster competition because products from different vendors can work together and prevents technology of ca or capability changes in one layer from affecting other layers above and below. For example, we have an IP that works as a network layer now, IPv4 is uh, what we have, and IPv6, well, it's coming up, it's the newest one. For example, in the future, we might have a different IP version of IP, and we don't really want to change other layers. We just want to change, well, IP protocol. So it provides a common language to describe networking functions and capabilities. These are the reasons why we use a layered models. So now we're going to go through the step by step through each layers. So peer to peer communication, as you can see, I have an IP, I have a PC here, PC here with the IP address 10.1.1.5 and the MAC address, 48 bit MAC address, and then the server with IP address 10.1.1.1 and the MAC address starting with BB. The we are as a user communicating, for example, if we open a web browser or if we're trying to send an email or maybe we are trying to, um, transfer some files. The first layer is going to meet us is the application layer. Application layer is going to find out what sort of protocol you are trying to use. So for example, if you open a web browser, it says, okay, well, that is HTTP protocol. Maybe there's a DNS protocol, DHCP, FTP. There's a lot, there's a tons and tons of different protocols. And you're going to be learning quite a few on this course, but not all of them, definitely. So application layer is going to identify what sort of protocols we have just opened or initiated on network communication. Then application layer is going to move the data down to the presentation layer. Now presentation layer, the job of presentation layer is to find out uh, does it need to be encrypted and how do I format this application data and move it down to the session layer. Session layer is pretty much like the management of the conversation. And you can see it on the left here. I have the OSI model. And on the right here, I have a TCP IP model. All these three layers on the left of the OSI model, they are just an application on TCP IP model. And like I said, these are the upper layers. When we move down to the transport layer, transport layer is going to take this data from the application layer and is going to split it into smaller pieces. And that's called segment and make it ready for delivery. So the first thing is to actually split it into small pieces and on this layer, there's two protocols that work. We have a TCP and UDP. TCP is a reliable transfer, which we're going to send data and then wait for acknowledgement, while UDP is just a best effort delivery is going to just send the data. Now, after we segment that, it, that into small pieces, we're going to sequence each segment. Well, the TCP does that, just so that the other side can reassemble the way that we have split it into smaller pieces. And we can identify the with a port number. So for example, what port number is using HTTP, source port number, and destination port number. Once we're ready with that, we move it down to the network layer. Now the network layer is going to decide, okay, what is the logical IP, logical address? Where is the source address, like IP address, and where is the destination address? Some of the protocols that work in this layer, you can see it on the screen. IPv4, IPv6, ICMPv4, and ICMPv6. Now, ICMP 
is for pinging, yeah, for testing. Uh, if if you if I go very quickly here, HTTP is for browsing. DNS, you need this protocol to resolve names to an IP address. So we give a name, gives us an IP address because we can't remember numbers that well, as good as the DNS. Well, we remember names easy. DHCP, or that stands for dynamic uh, domain name system. DHCP is dynamic host configuration protocol. This is a server is going to assign IP addresses to the clients. So it's going to lease an IP address. And FTP stands for file transfer protocol. Now, once the network layer has, has given a logical address, it's going to hand it over to the data link layer. Now, data link layer is, is the layer who is going to communicate with the upper layer protocols and lower layers. So upper layers meaning that I, I don't mean the upper layers application is going to communicate with the network layer above it. But all this up to here is the software. And then the data link layer is going to meet, actually transfer that to the hardware, to the electricity um, or light, maybe if you're using fiber optic or waves, if you're using a wireless. And then it's going to move it down to the physical layer. Physical layer, it just zeros and ones going to the destination. Now, on the TCP IP model, these two layers are called network access. They do the same job, everything, but that's just, that's just the name of it. And then the layer, which was the network here, is called Internet. It's exactly the same thing, but this the name is different. The only layer that actually kept the name, and it still does the same thing, is the transport layer. And then we have an application for all these three layers. For example, um, let me just try and do this. Okay, so we have... If I write down, that's a that's an application. That's just data, yeah. Let's put data here. As you get this data, as we move it down to the transfer layer, transfer layer is going to take this data and it's going to split it into pieces, like that. And then each piece is called a segment. So we have a segment, 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 and the segments is the transfer layer or the transfer layer, the TCP is going to sequence. So here we have a segment and as well as sequence. So for example, sequence one, sequence two, sequence three, and sequence four, and so on. Each sequence is going to go to the destination independently. So each second sequence is going to get a address, logical address, and they can go to the destination. So when they arrive at the destination, they might not arrive the way we send them. So sequence number four might come first, and three, and so on. At the destination, they wait for all the sequence, they put them on the order, and then they give them to the application layer. So as the data now, each sequence, let's just take this sequence, uh, let's just take this sequence one, for example. Let's just take this sequence one, for example. So when this sequence goes to the to a network layer, now it's called a packet. So packet, once we put an IP address, source and destination IP address, we call it as a packet. Now after we're done with that, we give it to the net to the data link layer, and data link layer puts the source and destination MAC address and some other information which we're gonna learn as we go through the course. But at that point, it's called a frame. So we have, so we have. Uh, let me just clear this. So we have a data up three layers. Then we call it a segment at layer four. At layer three, we call it a packet. At layer two, it's a frame, right? Now, I'm going to show you in the next slide, I'm going to show you how the communication happens between these two PCs, between the end device, uh, the, the PC on the left here, and the server on the right. So PC on the left, for example, has got some data they need to send. So the application layer is going to identify, okay, well, what's this data that you're sending? Well, let's just imagine that it's a web traffic. The PC has opened this uh, web browser and is searching for this website. Once it's done that, once it's identified, it's going to give it to the transport layer. So transport layer is going to add a header, layer 4 header. It's like, for example, the source port number and destination port number. As well as it's going to make it into smaller pieces, but it's going to add the port number, destination, uh, source port number and destination. Source port number, for example, is going to pick it anything from the private range. For example, from 49,152 to 65,533. All these are the so private range. Destination port number is a well-known port number. So, for example, from 0 to 1,023. 
Now, because we have in a web browsing, and when we learn in the next lesson, which we can only be learning a bit more on the TCP and a bit more about the port numbers, but because it's a web browsing, that's a port 80. That's the destination. Port source port number, just imagine 64001. After they segment it, sequence it, give it the port number, transport layer has done its job and is going to forward it to the network layer. Now, network layer doesn't really understand there was a transport. It knows that there's a transport layer in there, but it really doesn't read it. It's not interested with that. It's interested with its own header. It's going to add its own header. So its own header is going to use the IP address as a source, uh, source IP address and destination IP address. So 10.1.1.5 is a source. 10.1.1.1 is a destination. Once it's done that, it's going to move it down to the data, data link layer. And the data link layer, again, it knows that there is a, an IP packet in there, IP version 4 packet in there, but it's not really concerned what's inside there. Then the data link layer is going to add a source MAC address, which is AA. I just abbreviated to two first letters and destination BB. So we have a source MAC address and destination MAC address, as well as it's going to add the frame check sequence. Now, frame check sequence is for error detection. In cases, for example, if it gets corrupted in the transit, then if it's not the way it was sent, then we can identify there is an error. So we're going to detect the error, not correction, just detection. And if there is an error here, then we just throw away the frame. Now, as the frame is moving down the layers, that's called encapsulation. So we kind of like... We have a, something that we want to send from the source to destination, something that we want to send from the source to destination. That is called good put. So as we want to send the good put, we can't just forward it as to the destination. We have to package it. So for example, imagine that you're sending something, jewelry or something important to your friend somewhere else in a different city. You can't just send it in there. You can't just put a stamp in that jewelry and just send it. What you need to do, you need to maybe bubble wrap it, put it in the box, put it in another box and so on. That is called encapsulation. As the data goes to the destination, the data is going to be decapsulated. It's going to be opened and every box is going to be removed. And that's called de-encapsulation until we get to the good put. So at the destination, the first thing they're going to do, the destination is going to check the frame check sequence making sure there's no error and there hasn't been any error on transit. Then find out the destination MAC address. Now destination MAC address, it compares it to his own MAC address, which it will, it will be in the RAM. And since it's the same, he knows, okay, well, that's for me. So I need to open it a bit further. So it removes the layer two header and the, the trailer, and it gives it to the internet layer. Now internet layer is going to look at the destination IP address. And it's going to try and match it with his own IP address, which is here. This one will be on the RAM. So yes, it is my IP address. And um, that's it. Let me just open it a bit further, empty the data, and give it to the transport layer. Now transport layer, it's going to look at the destination um, port number. So destination port number 80. Yep, I'm going to hand it over to the HTTP um, server. As you saw, the, the OSI model has seven layers. The TCP IP model has four layers. Now, you need to remember both of them. For example, if, if the question would be like, where is the packet? What layer is the packet? And the choices are, let, just, um, let me just bring this. For example, you say, okay, where, what layer is the packet? And the choice maybe is application, presentation, session, and transport. Now, um, no, sorry, sorry, no, say, say it's application, presentation, transport, and internet. These are the choices. Now, you need to know because there, there's both layers. You can say, okay, well, it's an internet. It's called internet, yeah. Now, you have to remember all these layers, so OSI and the TCP IP model. Some people, they will use something like this to remember, like, please do not throw sausage pizza away. One way to remember it, or you can remember, for example, all people seem to need need data processing. This is a, like when you are in the exam and you are stressed to try and remember. Thank you very thank you for watching this section 1.1 compare and contrast OSI and TCP IP model. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye bye.